reaction with organometallics. In this lesson, we're going to take a look uh, at how some of the carboxylic acid derivatives, particularly acid chlorides and hydrides and esters, uh, react with two major classes of organometallics, the Grignard reagent, organomagnesium halides, uh, as well as the Gilman reagent, organocuprates. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. Before we look at the reaction of organometallics with our carboxylic acid derivatives, I just want to quickly review what it looks like when they reacted with our ketones and aldehydes. And we'll use a ketone here, and we'll use a methyl magnesium halide here, our Grignard reagent. And just remember that the carbon magnesium bond here has got a significant amount of partial ionic character, leaving that carbon partially negative, and you should treat this as being the equivalent of a carbanion. And so a very strong nucleophile here. And uh, instead of drawing the arrow from the lone pair on that carbanion, that doesn't technically exist. So the two electrons in the carbon-magnesium bond are the equivalent of the anion electrons there. We'll kick the electrons up to the, uh, the pi electrons up to the oxygen. And that's our nucleophilic addition with a ketone. We'll now attach that methyl group. Cool, and then we'll do an acid workup step with either water or H3O plus and simply protonate the oxygen there to complete the nucleophilic addition. Okay, so that was with ketones and aldehydes. Big difference here, with our acid chlorides are in hydrides and our esters, is that now we'll be doing actually the addition of two equivalents, whereas the first one we'll do nucleophilic substitution because we'll have a leaving group. So, but that's gonna form a ketone and then we'll do nucleophilic addition to that ketone just like we've done here. So if we look, the only difference here is really, we've just got different leaving groups. We've got a chlorine leaving group here. We've got a carboxylate leaving group for the anhydride. And then we've got an alkoxide leaving group for the ester. But in every one of these cases, we're gonna add excess Grignard. And I'll use a methyl Grignard again, make it analogous. And then we'll finish this off with an acid workup again. And in this case, it doesn't really matter if we use the acid chloride, the anhydride, or the ester. In all three cases, we're just going to replace a different leaving group, but with exactly the same thing, in this case, a methyl group. And so in all three cases, we're now going to have created a methyl ketone in this particular example. So, but again, we saw that the Grignard reacts with ketones, and so we're going to add once again here. We'll add a second methyl Grignard in a now a nucleophilic addition reaction, and then our acid workup step will protonate the oxygen to give us our alcohol. And so that's the key here. We get to add two equivalents. Now, the truth is, with the acid chloride and possibly the anhydride, you might be able to stop this and isolate uh, the addition of one equivalent and stuff like that, although I'm not going to present that here. But with the ester, you'd really struggle to, with this. And we, we talked about that in chapter 19, whereas the ketone you produce is more reactive than the ester you start with, and so you have an issue there. We don't necessarily have that issue here, but a lot of books aren't going to present it, and I'm not going to present it either. So because we have another way of pulling that off, as we'll see with the Gilman reagent. So in this case, our ketone here is just an intermediate along the way. But that your product here would be this tertiary alcohol. So let's take a look at how this would be different with a Gilman reagent. So now we'll take a look at the reaction with a Gilman reagent here. And your Gilman reagents are organocuprates now. And so instead of magnesium, we have a copper as the metal in the organometallic. And in addition to being called organocuprates, some people get a little more specific and they call them lithium dialkyl cuprates. Same diff. So there's your Gillen reagents here. So not quite as reactive. The carbon-copper bond is not as polar as the carbon-magnesium bond. And so not being as reactive, it turns out they're not going to react with esters. So we'll get esters off the list here. So, but they will still react with both the acid chloride and the anhydride. And in this case, we'll start off by doing nucleophilic substitution. We'll have a methyl group replace either leaving group, leading to exactly the same product in this case and give us a ketone. And the big difference here is that whereas your uh, uh, Grignard reagents will react with ketones to then produce a tertiary alcohol, so your organocuprates here are not gonna be reactive with ketones. They react with acid chlorides and anhydrides, but not with aldehydes, ketones, esters, and so on and so forth. That's why we took the ester off the list, but it's also why we're able to get the ketone as the product because the Gilman reagent's not gonna react with it once it's formed. Cool, that's the summary of the reaction of the organometallics with your carboxylic acid derivatives.
Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for uh, the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems on carboxylic acids and their derivatives, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.